So Nura takes a step toward him and speaks in a strained low voice, You, what is it? What do you want to see my husband about? Krogstad bank business in a way. I have a small post in the bank and I hear your husband as to be our chief now. Nora, then it is nothing but dry business matters. Mrs. Helmers, absolutely nothing else. So now uh, Krogstad knows that Helmer is the manager of the bank in which he is uh, working as he said that I have a small post in the bank so he has a small position in the bank and he comes to speak to uh, the chief or the manager uh, now of the bank who is uh, Mr. Mr. Helmer so rank Helmer Lindy, go downstairs. The nurse comes forward with the children. Nora shuts the whole door. Nora, with a stifled cry, turns around and gets up to her knees. Ah, what do you want now? After uh, all the people who were in the house left, we uh, found that Krogstad coming back again to uh, speak to Nora privately. Why he wants to speak privately to Nora and why, uh, what he wants to say uh, to her, this is what we uh, can know right now. So Nora, what do you want? Krogstad, excuse me, the outer door was ajar. So the outer door was, was not closed, but it was ajar. So I could... Uh, come in again. I suppose someone forgot to shut it. Uh, Nora, if you speak slightly of my husband, I shall turn you out of the house. So look how she is defending her husband. She said that if you speak badly, uh, slightly means here ba badly about my husband, I will or I shall turn you out of the house. So uh, she is ready to dismiss him if he speaks badly about her husband. You are bold. Bold means brave. You are bold, Mrs. Helmer. I'm not afraid of you any longer. As soon as the new year comes, I shall in a very short time be free of the whole thing. Of course, she is, she is talking here about the money uh, she got from the bank and now only uh, maybe uh, only she has to pay for one month and uh, the whole story is over now she she doesn't know it need to pay any more for the bank after paying the last installment so Krog is tad controlling himself now listen listen to me it seems that he has something very important to tell her Listen to me, Mrs. Helmer. If necessary, I am prepared to fight for my small post in the bank as if I were fighting for my life. So, I have a small post in the bank and I have to fight for this small post as if I were fighting for my life. So, if you're husband thinks of dismissing me out of the bank definitely i will not let it go that simply so i have to defend my small post now krogstad then it is because you have in the well but i have the means to compel you so if you do not help me to keep my post in the bank so I have the means, I have the methods to force you to do this. Nura, you do not mean that you will tell my husband that I owe you money. Nura, if my husband does get to know of it, and this is what she is expecting from him, if he knows about this, of course 
he will at once pay you what is still owing and we shall have nothing more to do with you so now uh, she is she is expecting her husband to be a responsible husband and she said that if you tell him about the money he will pay you the money and it's over so you have nothing against us Krogestad starts to be angry more and he coming step nearer listen to me Mrs. Helmer either you have a very bad memory or you know very little business I shall be obliged to remind you of a few details Nora should he did sign them did, did is your husband your wife your your father already signed the papers I had left the data blank that is to say your father should uh, himself have inserted the date uh, which he signed the paper do you remember that yes I remember so when she went to get the money from the bank he uh, gave her uh, bank papers to sign and of course she needed someone to sign to uh, be responsible for this money in case uh, that uh, she's not able to pay the money back yes I think I remember then I gave you the bond to send the by post to your father. Is that not so? Yes. Krogestad and you naturally did so at once because five or six days afterwards you brought me the bond with your father's signature. And then I gave you the money. Well, haven't I been paying off regularly? Fairly so. Yes. But to come back to the matter in hand, that must have been a very trying time for you, Mrs. Helmer. It was indeed. Your father was very ill, wasn't he? He was very near his end. And died soon afterwards. Yes. Okay. Now, tell me, Mrs. Helmer, can you by any chance remember what day your father died what day your father died on what day of the month i mean nora papa died on the 29th of september that's correct i have asserted it for myself and as that it is so there is discrepancy Taking, taking paper from his pocket, which I cannot account for. What discrepancy? I don't know. The discrepancy consists, Ms. Hilmer, in the fact that your father signed this paper three days after his death. This is very important. Now, your father died on the 29th of September. But look here, your father dated his signature the 2nd of October. And this is impossible for someone to die on the 29th of September. And then October comes after September, as you know. So after three days, coming back to life to sign some papers. So this is a clear evidence, a clear-cut evidence that it was not her father who signed these papers. After a short pause, throws, uh, throws her head up and looks definitely at him. No, it was not. It was I that throwed Baba's name. Krogestad, are you aware that is a dangerous confession? In what way? You shall have your money soon but let me tell you this if I lose my position a second time if your husband dismisses me out of the bank if I lose my position a second time you shall lose yours with me he bows goes out through the hole 
So he spoke to her in a very threatening tone, telling her that she has to act to persuade her husband not to dismiss him. And Nora appears buried. Nonsense. Trying to frighten me like that. I'm not silly, as he thinks. Begins to busy him herself putting the children's things in order. And yet, no, it is impossible. I did it for love's sake. So what she did was only for herself. Helmer, think how guilty man like him. Now Nora tried to persuade her husband to keep him in the bank. And of course, as we said, that he has his many reasons not to accept him in the bank anymore. And he is telling us here about uh, the reasons why he wants to uh, dismiss uh, him. And uh, Nora keeps uh, trying to persuade him to keep Krogustad in the bank because she does not want any problem. Now, Nora is alone and the nurse coming, uh, asking her that the little ones, her children, are begging so hard to be allowed to come and to mama. They wanted to see their uh, mama, their mother, uh, Nora, and she said, no, 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 don't let them come and to me. You stay with them, Annie. Very well, ma'am. Shuts the door, pale with the corner. Deprave my children, poison my home, a short pose. Then she tosses her head. It's not true. It cannot possibly be true. I cannot do this to my children. I cannot do even this to my husband. What I did, when she got the money, she only intended to save the life of her husband and not to cause any harm to her family. Okay, and this is the end of Act 1. And also this is the end of this lecture. Inshallah, we will meet soon to see what's going to happen in Act 2 and in Act uh, 3. With this, we come to the end of this lecture. Thank you very much for being with me. And inshallah, uh, see you uh, soon in the coming lectures. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.